head, and there he goes. Abyss gonna clean him up. Olaf goes down. Everyone's just gonna line up here for Lazzy. He's gonna find himself the Quadra. I give it to him. That's a kill. Grizzly with the quad feet gets the ace. Available just spin to win all over. That game was insane. Hello everybody, welcome to another day of League of Legends here at St. Clair College. I'm John Bilbang's Dima, joined today by Josh Fundy Pafundi. And uh, last time we saw Saints, it was a really tight series between them and their opponent, but they did end up winning it 2-1. Uh, kind of crazy for us, we only got to really see half the game. But uh, regardless, it was still a fun one, and I'm really looking forward to how this next one's going to go against UTM. Yeah, we got a best of three today coming up here against UTM. Should be starting shortly. Um, I'm very excited to see how this goes, you know, best of three. They got time to work around the enemy team and, uh, and kind of change their comps in between games, you know, yep. make any changes if necessary. Yeah, I really, I'm looking towards the, uh, top jungle here. All season's really been a story of, uh, E-Hug and Ricky, both these players just performing, uh, un incredibly well on their champions. And, uh, I really think they have a wide berth. They have, uh, a lot of assassin choices. For E-Hug, he's played the Talon, he's played the Tali, he's played the Zed, and he's performed on all of them. Um, we haven't seen his Kindred yet this season, which I'm kind of surprised by because he is known for it. But Kindred has kind of fallen out of the meta. Is You're not exactly going crazy for those farming junglers right now. You are kind of moving towards the Assassin junglers. Something like the Kiana as well could be something he might play. And in the top lane, Ricky just looks good in everything. We've seen him play everything from Silas to Aatrox to Set to... Uh, even Jarvan in the top lane and he's looked good on everything so I I'm really looking forward to how they're going to play in this series and I'm looking for an answer from the University of Toronto Mississauga and how they're going to play uh, against him in that top lane yeah yeah personally I'm looking forward to see Ricky play here especially you know I haven't been able to catch much of the regular season unfortunately but I have been seeing the clips on Twitter and on Twitch and yeah Ricky has just he's been putting in the work especially in that top lane and, you know, his his champion pool is just crazy. I mean, he can play everything, and he seems to want to hard carry every single time. Yeah, for sure. And I'm interested to see, too, we have seen, uh, actually, a couple days ago, we saw uh, Take Young uh, in the mid lane for St. Clair. He did replace Zephyroth for a game. Zephyroth did come back in game number two. So it'll be interesting to see which one of these guys they'll play, both of them playing exceptionally well, but both of them stylistically playing uh, pretty different champions. We saw Take Young on the Galio, and we saw Silas again for Zephyroth. So it's going to be interesting to see how they play around that. Obviously, Barlow and Fresh doing real well in the bot lane for a lot of these games. And now that Misfortune is in the meta, I think Barlow looks really good on that champion and i'm hoping we see uh i'm most likely expecting to see mf be a very very popular pick here uh in worlds going on right now misfortune is 100 percent pick or banned in oh, every yeah. single game so i will be very surprised if we don't see one of these teams taking the misfortune and uh, as well as the amumu yeah yeah i could definitely see an amumu maybe a leona too just any kind yeah. of aggressive engaged support right you know if the amumu gets snatched away from them they may have to switch maybe go like leona nautilus Anything like that can, that can just really set up that MF halt. Uh, it's definitely lethal down there. Yeah, for sure. And uh, a patch did come out uh, just a couple days ago, and it did buff Hecarim as well as Udyr. Udyr Phoenix Stance specifically got buffed. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some of those picks come through as well. Everyone really loves picking up the Hecarim when he does get buffed because it's such a strong champion. It offers yes, such good ganks and super high mobility in the jungle, which is always valuable towards uh any kind of team comp you could need because he kind of fills like hecarim specifically kind of fills that pseudo role of mobility tankiness bruiser and um a lot of good peel so i think that's definitely going to be something that teams might want to go for now that he's come back in the meta yeah you can really slot in hecarim into kind of any comp and mm. he'll find his role in there yeah. whether or not he needs to kind of build a little less damage go more on the tank side frontline a little more you know he's got his w he's got that crazy sustain in those fights if he's taking Conquer as well, that just adds to it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what do you think is going to be played here in the mid lane? You've seen a lot of different stuff. St. Clair has played uh, a little bit of the Poke Mages, but they have risk gravitated towards the Silas. We've seen him played in uh, almost half the games that they play. And obviously, I think he's a very valuable pick. Uh, actually, we're just going to get right into bans here. So enough talk about Silas. But it is going to be St. Clair banning out the Talon, Seraphine, and possibly the Jax here. And UTM taking out... The Zed, Fizz, and the Jarvan. So the Jarvan, we have seen Ricky play that as well as E-Hug. Both those players are doing pretty well on it. Although I have to say, Ricky's Jarvan has looked exceptional. And uh, the Zed 
is a flex ban, um, but specifically in the jungle, he's been looking really good. And the Fizz, obviously, uh, another target ban. Yeah, first pick is going to be MF. Yeah, not surprising to see. You know, we were literally just talking about it. MF, very strong right now. We're going to see the Ezreal pick coming out from St. Clair here. Um, kind of a little in a different vein. You know, MF is kind of trying to get those early kills in lane. You know, once she hits six, she's trying to take advantage of that. And Ezreal's kind of, you know, sitting back. Scaling, he's probably going to buy a tier. You know, we're going to see the regular Sunder tier, man immune build. Yep. And, uh, I mean, we've seen Ezreal as pretty much the main answer to MF at world so no surprising here that, that that's going to be what they're going to look towards and it looks like it might have a graves too and graves has been played in both the top lane and the jungle so i wouldn't be surprised to see ricky possibly take that up into the top lane hasn't played it yet this season but definitely could be a viable pick and is really good into a lot of the strong top laners right now specifically uh aatrox which has been very prevalent and we actually see there's no aatrox ban again this game so last uh Tuesday, actually, we saw Ricky on the Aatrox just go absolutely crazy, and uh, I, I'm kind of surprised to not see them pick it, although last time around, they did pick it on pick number three, so they could go that way as well, but you do see the Mumu pick, so the MF Mumu combo does come through for St. Clair here, so I, I'm very, very surprised that that wasn't taken away or banned away if UTM did not opt to pick it, so um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they play this one out. Yeah, I'm surprised that... I, I don't know if St. Saint, Clair... Saint uh, oh, it was St. Clair that pick, picked the Amumu. I'm on oh. the... Yeah, I'm I think, flipped on I the think wrong they, side I think, here. Yeah, I think it flipped there. <laughs> um, so, um, oh, yeah, so okay. Misfortune Amumu going to be coming out for St. Clair here then. Yeah, so that Grace pick actually makes a lot more sense because they do know the, um, the Aatrox is really good for Ricky, right? Yeah, so Ricky at is UTM, a threat. Yeah, UTM has an answer for that Aatrox in the grave, so it does make St. Clair hesitate. Maybe you don't want to take Aatrox and put him on a more comfortable champ such as Set that can actually fight cool. into the graves a lot better. He may just be banned out here, though. Yeah. Uh, we're going to see if this goes through. Yeah, and the Braum pick, too. I think the Braum Ezreal is pretty strong in the bot lane against the Amumu Misfortune. It negates yeah. a lot of what they want to do in the early game with that Braum shield. And yeah. even when you hit level 6, like that is so effective in actually negating a lot of Misfortune's damage is just being able to hide behind that shield and hopping in front of your ADC or your mid laner, trying keeping them alive. So uh, not surprising there. Good answer into the, Braum, into the MF Amumu. And yeah, so the Aatrox ban comes through. Um, not surprising there. Looks like probably another top ban, I'm assuming. Yeah, it will be the set. So a lot of bans thrown towards Ricky, but we're pretty familiar with that. Yeah, yeah, he likes to soak up bans. I mean, the Jax ban was also coming out, so he's going to soak up three bans. Uh, definitely, it seems like UTM knows where the threat lies on SEC. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to have to see how Ricky responds. Yeah, the, the top pool is actually getting pretty thinned out here with the Jarvan Fiora ban as well. Looks like Vladimir might be the last ban here, so that can be flexed to top or mid lane um but yeah it will be it is a good answer actually to the cinder and silas looks like it might be picked up by utm i, I think it's going to be pretty good does have the amumu alt available always uh love having that opportunity to see the amumu alt on silas and a good answer mm -hmm. um for the mf amumu combo is you can just throw down curse of the sad mummy when you get curse of the sad mummy so kind of negates a lot of that so yeah will be the pick there not too surprising silas we've seen a lot of him in the last couple of weeks and i think the champion is pretty strong but i think more than anything it gives you so much flexibility in how you want to play it right because you can pick up for example the amumu alt and go for some crazy team fight or you can pick up the mf alt and kind of sit back in a fight and use the alt um to, you know force yourself over the top of a fight and be able to stay back retreat and then move forward after you use your ultimate uh, to do a lot of aoe damage yeah yeah you're definitely still potent after you use that ultimate yeah. and the viego is going to be coming out picked for the jungle here for saint Clair saints um, I, I I haven't seen E Hug on this before. I don't know has he played no, it in regular uh, he season. Yeah, he's played in the regular season. I'm very surprised too because he get, did get pretty hard nerfed in a couple Sion. patches in a row. So I'm kind of surprised, but I mean E Hug has looked really good every single game he's played. So at this point, I, I don't doubt what he's picking because he hasn't given me a reason to doubt him. Very well, and Ricky is going to be picking up the Scion here. It looks like as Orn is picked for the last pick for University of Toronto Mississauga. What do you think about these team comps? Um, honestly, honestly, I'm not sure. I really don't know how this is gonna play out because they kind of every character is kind of a hard counter to one another, mm -hmm. right? You know, like you said, you pick up that Silas, you can kind of negate the Mu a Mumu alt, and then the Brom just has a quick we to whatever yeah. teammate is in the middle of that MF alt, right? So as long as that Brom can either stay out of the Amumu alt that inevitably becomes comes before the MF alt. Yeah. 
then he can kind of peel for his team, you know, yeah. save out probably their UTM's like, or UTM can save uh, SEC's like kind of one, their main threat in the fight. Yeah. And then maybe they just got to try to pick off that Syndra in the back. So Yeah, for sure. And I think right now you're looking at there's a lot of disruption for this MF. You have the Ornalt available for that long-range knockup against the MF ult. You have, uh, you know, the Silas who always going to be a threat on the back line. So there's a lot of answers for UTM into the Saints uh, team comp that they've picked. I think they do have a lot of power. I think MF and Mumu, despite being, you know, uh, Ezra, going into an Ezreal Braum, I still think they have a lot of power. Basically, I'd say the strongest bot lane duo right now. Maybe you could argue yeah. Lucian Nami is stronger, but I think MF Amumu is, is just so useful going on later into the game as well. And I think more importantly, I'm looking at this Viego pick because he is he got pretty hard nerfed and I haven't seen it. He hasn't really been in meta for at least a couple patches. So, I mean, it's always good to have a Viego because you can transfer that power when you pick up those souls um, to enter them and then use their other team against you. But realistically i think it's going to be an interesting pick but again we do have a tank top lane we have the scion into the orn it's not going to be too much activity so i'm looking maybe for e-hug and uh, as well as the graves to path towards that top lane try and find a pick early onto one of these tanks push themselves ahead and look to try and force himself around the map look for something on these objectives because i think right now st Clair does have the easier objective take with the viego mf and mumu they are going to have priority in that bot lane for the first little bit so i'm looking for them to try and take advantage of it and uh yeah yeah, if they're going to have Pryo in the bot lane, you know, we want to see these early drakes, especially someone like Viego. He's got that sustain. He can yeah. take those early drakes, even if he only gets one one person from the bot lane to come help him. Um, and then uh, up top lane, you know, we're not going to see a lot of action, really. But if they can get a quick early kill and maybe secure an early rift, we know that bot lane is going to have a lot of Pryo. They can yeah. maybe drop a rift bot lane, drop a rift mid, depending on how that matchup goes. They've definitely got options here in the jungle. Um so. Yeah, I think even too like you playing the Silas into this uh, Silas into the Sintra. Sintra is going to have priority in that lane for quite a while. Basically, uh, even after six, like it's going to be really hard for the Silas unless he gets a gank from his jungler or from his support to try and help him out. I, I really think he's going to have priority in that mid lane for a long time. So I'm looking for Zephyrot to force himself, maybe look for some roams around the map, try and put this Orn even further behind because. I think right now, like, I haven't seen Ricky on a tank this season. He's played Set, he's played Aatrox, he's played Sal, he's played all these kind of, like, bruisery type champions. I haven't seen him on a tank this season, so I'm very curious to see if he can try and get an advantage there. I mean, you're going Cyan into Orn, it's just going to be kind of slap each other around, not really doing too much. Yeah. Now, you can't really, like, 100% go all in on someone and kill them. I most of the time yeah so uh, i'm really looking for how ricky's going to convert this into because usually um what happens is ricky gets ahead barlow and fresh tend to go behind and then they try and transfer that power from the jungle top that's winning into the bot lane and that's how they win games so i'm very interested to see the onus is more on barlow and fresh this game to try and get ahead and then you have ricky as the like late game insurance tank to, t to hold the line for this barlow fresh combo so they can land those incredible amumu mf faults yeah yeah they can definitely i could see barlow and fresh getting ahead here on their own um just based off the poke they have in lane you know the the ezreal q is definitely potent and uh yeah. it's definitely gonna hurt if he can if we're seeing him use it for a lot of poke but if we're seeing him just queuing for cs it's kind of a passive lane with that with that uh misfortune -y, uh there's just gonna be constant damage and then there's always that constant threat of the amumu with his now two yeah. bandages up uh there's just there's always that threat of being all in in that ball lane yeah for sure and i think this combo of amumu cinder is going to be very hard to deal with in the mid game especially if you're trying to dance around like the silas and the graves will be because there's so much cc uh between the syndra and the amumu a lot of aoe and even with the scion coming in there's going to be a lot of problems that they're going to have to deal with but i think silas does have a lot of good alts to choose from he even has the scion alt for engage um and i think that's going to be really valuable for them because if they do want to try and start a fight you do have the orn engage but other than that you don't really have a lot other than the mid laner. So if Orn isn't in a fight, you're going to need Silas to be able to engage those fights. Um, they do have a really good amount of disengage, though. I think the Graves Braum is really good for disengage. They'll be able to peel off fights they don't want to take. So it's going to be on uh, St. Clair, on Zephyrot in the mid lane, on Syndra, and especially on Fresh uh, to try and engage these fights and to keep them in without uh, forcing them to try and back up and disengage. Yeah, I'd really like to see Zephyrot kind of just press his ranged advantage here before Silas can kind of get up and running with all of his abilities and like a lost chapter. 
um maybe just see some poke you know maybe kind of keep him under tower maybe make him lose up some xp if possible uh but yeah really try and just uh push that lane and have prio and let ehug kind of just have like free reign of both rivers yeah and i want to talk about the assassin jungle meta that's been happening the last couple patches we had um specifically in the last patch we had zed buffed we had um kiana buffed we had talon buffed yeah talon. and uh we had talia buffed and all these junglers who weren't very prevalent are now like the best junglers in the game you have talon basically pick banned in almost every game now we've seen him i think once and every other time he's been banned and that was the one time that ehug did get it he went up 100 farm at 15 minutes and i mean to what extent do you think these assassin jungles are going to go and do you think they're going to be prevalent because you saw in this game i mean although zed did get banned and talon did get banned we didn't see a kiana which i was very surprised by and we didn't see a talia which i was also very surprised by so do you think it's just because of the team comp or do you think it was just maybe something that like zed and talon are really good and maybe kiana's kind of falling off uh one thing about kiana too is zed and talon are really good and kiana's definitely really good as well and while all three champions are definitely up there skill-wise, I mean, all assassins are, Kiana is definitely one of the harder champions yeah. in the game, just overall. So if these junglers, they see the Zed ban, they see the Talon get banned, they're thinking, oh, I want the assassin jungler, but like if they're not comfortable on Kiana, that's not a pick you really want to go yeah. with when you could just say, oh, I'm going to pick out the Graves, or I'm going to pick the Viego, and I'm comfortable with it. Even, okay, Viego's gotten nerfed a few patches, you know. If I'm comfortable with it, I'd rather see myself on that than just kind of picking the Kiana for the fact that she's good. Yeah, for sure. And I think, too, with these tank top laners, it doesn't allow... Like, we saw when the Assassin Jungle was picked for St. Clair, you had, um like, the Aatrox, or you had the Bruisery types that could invade the jungle that could help out Ehug when he wanted to go into the enemy jungle and try and mess up what they were doing. So now with just the Scion top, you don't really have that allowance. And with the Orn top, you don't have that allowance to say, okay, can you come run with me? Because realistically, they're probably going to be pretty slow to get there if they ever get there at all. And they're just going to be kind of hoping, okay, we just want to have a peaceful laning phase. We want to scale up, get to a point where we're just so tanky that we can take care of uh, the Amumu MF alt if you're utm and for st Clair, you want to be able to deal with the silas and deal with the graves and then once you can get tanky enough to deal with those you don't have to worry so much about it right so i think maybe that's why they didn't choose assassin jungler this game is because their top laners aren't you know the most mobile and aren't able to get to those fights where assassin junglers usually thrive off of yeah there's also especially we're seeing the bot lane even on both sides there's like you said a lot of disengage there's a lot of disengage and there's a lot of peel available yeah so sure. your only real like surefire ganks here if you're playing a talon or a zed is mid because you're seeing casters on both sides but then again they've also got disengage you've got the syndra syndra ball shooting away with their e uh you're gonna see talon or si silas. silas he's yeah. got dashes you know he's got a stun on his chain uh he's got a lot of mobility to make it out of there so i feel like the assassin jungler just weren't really the pick yeah, for, for sure. For this, these specific comps that these teams are running. Yeah, and I think the key for me this game is going to be look towards the junglers and see how they do, because obviously you wanted to prio pick the MF Amumu. That's just uh, that's just given at this point. But it was a first uh, first round pick of Graves in that first rotation for UTM, so it was very very highly valued. We did see um, you know Viego get saved for the last uh, the last two picks for st Clair, so the grave is very high value for this jungler and i want to see it pop off because that's really when you're prioritizing a jungler that heavily you really want to see it pay off in the long run because that's going to be the most value you're going to get out of uh, out of an early round pick especially when you're on blue side you have those two options when you start out so you get your kind of your answer the mf with the ezreal and then your next power pick is going to be the graves yeah for sure um, looks like we are going to be going into game here we're going to have utm on red side st Clair on blue side um could just be looking at a slow start here neither team has a very like concrete level one other than they do have the amumu bandage on the side of saint Clair. Uh, however not too much cc they've got the they've got the silas on the side of utm but yeah cc. really interesting here cinder brought ignite so they're only going to have that mm. uh, Ricky TP and looks like an invade action in the bot lane here. There will be an MF sitting here, but she will ward it. Barlow will be aware this is happening and they will back off. So nothing too crazy happening in the early game. But yeah, I was saying Zephron has the ignite, not the TP. So Batty is going to have the TP advantage here as well. as Ezreal bringing the cleanse and Braum actually bringing exhaust while Fresh brings the ignite. So double ignite actually for St. Clair means they're going to want to fight early and they're going to want to fight often. 
Yeah, we're also seeing no heal in the bot lane here. We're seeing a cleanse on the Ezreal, so he's de <laughs> he's definitely concerned about the Amumu. I can tell you that. Yeah. No, it's always you always got to be concerned about the Amumu support because you get hit by one bandage toss, you're probably getting chained up by the second one. So yeah, most likely. Yeah, so a good choice there. I think the cleanse is probably a good call, especially into a team like the MF, uh, the uh, Syndra MF Amumu. That's just so much chain CC you can put together. Yeah, for sure. So it gives yourself a little more of an allowance. Yeah, so standard start here. Graves will be tar starting in the top lane, and it will be E-Hug or starting in the bot lane on the red buff. So uh, nothing too crazy. Looks like junglers most likely will just play normal pathing, and uh, yeah. Yeah, mid lane, you know, we're just seeing regular first wave stuff here. Q is going to come out from body, a little bit of damage there. And we're going to see a couple autos from Zephyrot. He's able to get the electrocute off. That's a nice little chunk of damage level one. Yeah, and I'm looking towards top lane here. The Orin actually did go and leash for this Graves on the buff at the top. So he will be slightly behind in lane. And in the meantime, we'll be able to push this wave out. And I wouldn't be surprised... To see Viego challenge him somewhere in this bot uh, jungle when that happens. Because Barlow and Fresh will be shoving this wave in in a moment. So they will have Pryo in all three lanes. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see E-Hug trying to use that. Ooh, nice Q land there. But not going to mean too much. Aftershock will proc and they'll back off each other for the moment. Yeah, he's just quickly out of there. But we even just saw right there. Just that Amumu. Fresh walking up on that Amumu. You immediately see uh, the Ezreal and the Brom step back because it's the threat is just that real especially in these early levels where you know losing a flash means you're losing your life later in a gank yeah for sure so looks like they will be doing standard jungle pathing diego just gonna clean up his top side most likely will be looking towards this orn for a gank most likely oh nice poke there by the orn won't dodge the q though so ricky will get the grass proc off but yeah syndra with pretty dominant pro uh pretty dominant proxy here in the mid lane so she will have a lot of priority and looks like there will be a fight here in the bottom river on this scuttle momentarily yeah come back up top lane here a lot of damage being traded there top um i'm assuming both are just gonna back away i mean they're playing those tanks uh they're not that, that damage isn't really too concerning to them so yeah, so it looks like Juno is pretty healthy here in the top lane. But yeah, there will be a slight scuffle here at the scuttle. Oh, they're going to invade this bot here. Diego will have position there, but Graves will be able to back off for a moment here. Oh, that's going to be a little bit of damage onto that Graves, but he will end up smiting away that camp, so he'll be okay. But Viego did end up getting the scuttle. So already a 9 CS advantage for this Viego over this Graves and E-Hug. Just doing E-Hug things. Mm -hmm. We're also seeing the CS advantage here in mid lane as E-Hug's going to walk through. Not going to press the gank, though. Silas is sitting under tower. Luno here, he is ooh, just barely going to get hit by the Q as he runs back under tower. Ricky, he's back at full health. He's got those corrupting pots in hand. He was able to get a quick back off and get the ruby crystal. Whereas, you know, the Ornn is just going to be buying buying items in lane. Ooh, ooh flash ignite. Oh, he's going to take. And he is going to take first blood. Zephyrot. On the Syndra, taking first blood over body fought in the mid lane. Yeah, that's the ignite difference in the mid lane there. That allows yeah. you to play, take aggressive trades. And like you saw, there was at least two or three times where the Silas wasn't able to dodge out the stun with the E. And it meant an electric shoot proc went down, it's a lot of poke damage. And then Zephyrot smartly finished it off with the predictive flash Q. Ended up landing onto that Silas, wasn't able to get away. And despite him trying to escape, he didn't end up using flash though which was very surprising because I thought he would have flashed with the Syndra, but I had Zephyrod just a little bit faster, and that means first blood. And a lot of Pryo here. That's going to be some poke down onto Ricky. A little bit of damage back, but like I said, they're just going to slap each other in top lane. Nothing yeah, crazy. in the mid lane here, we're seeing Zephyrod going back to lane with a lost chapter. That just That's going to make it even harder for Bodyfot to come back here. You know, we're already seeing he's being zoned off of his minions. Ooh, E-Hug hitting a quick stun here in the river. Zephyrod is going to come up for support. A quick QE, he's going to be able to take down oh, one. Oh, no, he couldn't end up changing bodies there. Unfortunate for E-Hug as the rest of the team. SCC is going to be running up top. Ricky LaFleur is going to get taken down. Passive is going to come up. Will he be able to get this Graves? He may. He does end up getting the Graves. Luno is going to pick up the kill on Zephyrot. And that is going to be a three for two in UTM's favor. Yes, yeah, so they actually played that pretty well. Orn picking up the triple kill, so he's going to be... Extra beefy there in the top lane, but uh, Viego and 
the Scion also picking up a couple kills as well. So slightly in the favor of UTM there. But again, you're still looking at that gold gap in the jungle. And it's just so much in Bieko's favor right now. Up 20 CS. And uh, Graves did pick up a couple of assists. But uh, should even it out. And right now, I'm looking more towards the mid lane. Because Silas did end up committing a lot of time going top there. He did end up getting uh, you know a couple assists. So it was for him. Uh, worth it, but he did lose a lot of experience in the middle, and you can even see, like, he's level... Sindra here is level 6, approaching level 7, while Silas just did pick up that level 6, so still an advantage here for Zephyrot in mid, and that's where I'm looking for him to start roaming uh, with this Viego and seeing if he can find anyone in the jungle. Yeah, it's not the worst situation I've seen for this Silas, but he's just that little bit behind that every single trade that comes out, he's gonna feel it, you know, he can't... His W isn't high enough level, he can't out-heal the trade... So he's going to be sitting under his tower for a lot of the time. Uh, and then top lane, we're seeing more smacks. Mid lane, another uh, another engagement coming out. And oh, and Bodyfot's able to take it after the Syndra R comes out and just isn't able to finish him off. Ehug's going to have to deal with that wave mid. Yeah, Ehug's in a dangerous place here though because his Graves is floating around. He doesn't have a ward in that top bush. But it looks like they will concede this. They're looking maybe to get this uh, Herald sometime soon. They will place down some vision around that objective and uh yeah that was a really really good fight to actually take in the mid lane there but for Zephyrot, i think he had to wait just a few seconds as the knight was up momentarily but he didn't wait for that went for an aggressive trade and i mean you did have the silas up at with a dark seal he did actually have a lost chapter available to him but didn't end up winning that 1v1 so good on silas and, and the key there too was silas actually predicted the q coming out from the syndra behind him and he stepped forward instead of stepping back so yeah. one of those times where you play aggressively and you get rewarded Ooh close to you there we're not going to catch him yeah and keep in mind that's also kind of a read on Zephyrot because that's the same thing he did to pick up that first blood so yeah. he, we already seen the micro adjustment from fight to fight I mean he's already picked up on that pattern we're gonna see fresh come up here help e-hug as the rest of the bot lane shows up to pick up this cloud drake yeah and that just results from the shove they had in the bot lane after the fight in mid they were able to get some priority there they did spot out Graves in top half as well, so it meant they were able to take that dragon no contest, but this could be dangerous. Zephyrot gonna have to retreat here in the face of two Ricky playing with fire in the top lane as well. Graves gonna try and help out this Orn, but not gonna catch anyone yet. So you see just a lot of shoving here in the bot lane from Barlow and Fresh. They are able to get a lot of prio here, and means Viego will try and roam to this jungle a lot more. Ooh, a missed E there actually onto the Silas, and Zephyrot is gonna have to play that carefully. He does have the ignite advantage, but at this point, if Silas can hop on, you, you're going to get chain CC and there's nothing you can do. So Juno actually going for a fight here onto Ricky. A lot of autos going down. Q can be traded. Oh, they're going to fight. E-Hug is not in a good place here. He's going to go for the 1v2. Does end up getting that Herald, but no, no one's going to touch. That's going to be a kill. Oh, no. Batty Fat going to get E-Hug there. Knockup going to go down as well. Ricky looking dangerous in the top lane here. Shield will come out. He's going to try and walk away from this one, but will Orn let him? Will this Orn on Horn? He's going to try and auto. That's going to be Luno. Taking another kill. Zephyrot trying to run away here from the Silas. But Silas with red buff is nothing you want to be messing with. Batty Fat looking. There's a second Q as well. He will be up momentarily. That's going to be an ult onto the Graves. But not going to be enough. Batty Fat getting another kill. And it is disaster in the river for St. Clair. Yeah, 7-3. I mean, be beautiful team play here by UTM. We're seeing as soon as there's these individual engagements are going on mid and top. And then as they're moving towards the river, UTM is able to just split up St. Clair so that, you know, we're not seeing Ricky be able to get in there to assist Zephyrot or Ehug uh, in the river there during these fights. And I think more importantly, you have to realize that you just did pick up the dragon in bot half, so you're not going to have help from your jungler. So contesting the objective can't, can't be something you're risking doing because you do know when the Silas starts moving up, the Grave is already going to be on Herald. And uh, with this 401 top lane or now your sign is not going to have priority at all in that lane so if they go for a fight like they did it is just going to be the orn coming out on top so i think they're gonna have to take a step back here realize okay they are down a pretty significant amount of gold here almost uh, a k and a half here and it's gonna be a fight in the mid lane actually gonna catch him with the e but the moon gonna be here as well as mf that's gonna be a curse of the sad mummy with a bullet time and he's gonna go down here in just a second batty fat being shut down Ooh. Goes on the Amumu, not exactly the person you wanted that shutdown on, but regardless, he does get shut down, and that's going to be a, a good roam there to the bot lane. Yeah, Fresh is going to pick up that kill. That's going to even out the gold a little bit. We're seeing about 500 more on UTM. Um, but one thing I do want to point out, this Orn is 4-0. He's already sitting at Mythic. No one else in the game is at Mythic yet. Um, so, <sighs> Ricky is going to have a tough time sitting here. He is up in CS, 
Um, however, we are seeing him. The Orn damage is starting to pile up now. Yeah, for sure. And I think right now, too, importantly, is that bot lane. It does seem like this MF and a Mumu combo is just constantly shoving this bot lane in. There's nothing much the Ezreal Braum can do about it. They are going to need this Graves to start roaming down sometime soon. Because as much as you can do, you do have a 401 Orn top. He's not going to be able to actually do much into this Scion. Just going to just gonna be poking him a little bit. Scion is going to be tanky enough to survive any engage he throws at him. So uh, even if you do have the Graves up, Scion always has the R to escape it. So I'm really looking for Proxy here to start going towards bot lane, trying to find um, something down there to try to relieve the pressure. Because even that opportunity that happened in mid lane, the kill onto Batty Fat, was because of the constant pressure that uh, St. Clair is throwing in the bot lane. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen both bot lanes in like a fight not right now over mm -hmm. Scuttle or a Dragon. Uh, because like like you said, that that top lane it's a very passive lane. There's gonna be it's the two tanks just smacking each other until both of them walk walk away at a quarter health. So I'd like to see the Ehug go to the bot lane, Proxy go to the bot lane. Somebody try to make a play so that we can either see SCC push this advantage that they know they have in the bot lane, or we get to see UTM help their bot lane scale a little harder. Yeah, so both junglers are gonna pick up their mythics here. Engage will come in the mid, E will not land. Chains on land. It's going to be double jungles here in the mid lane. Nice stun there, actually, by Zephyrok. Going to catch both of them. That's going to be all going down on a proxy. He will go down. Zephyrok going to get a kill there. It's going to be Curse of the Sad Mummy onto one, but Silas will just barely survive as well as E-Hug. And Fresh going to get knocked up, but nothing else going to go on. So it looks like Batty Fat barely surviving that engage in mid lane, but a kill did end up going over to Zephyrok. Yeah, we saw Proxy go down there. Uh, and that's exactly what you like to see. You like to see Fresh come up here on the map when he knows he's, these engagements are going to happen. A quick Q in and a quick ult and the damage is done. You know, we saw Body Fat. He just barely got away there. But if, say, oh, both Ignites actually came out in that fight. So I guess he really did just get away with one health. Yeah, a really good smart roam there by Jalen F2. Was able to get up in time to save his Silas there with the Guardian proc as well as the W. So, or, so the E, sorry. So really good awareness by him to match Fresh's roam, but unfortunately, uh, just a little bit too much aggression from Proxy there did end up resulting in him dying, even though he did have the shield bow. So uh, really good layering of CC there, and it's going to be a second dragon going over to UTM there. A little bit of miscommunication there. Viego going towards the top lane uh, didn't end up being aware of the possibility of the dragon bot. So yeah. pretty even game right now, though. Yeah, honestly... I'd like to see, I want to see what the what Dragon is up next, uh, what soul we're working with for this game. Oh, so we're going to be working with a, a Mountain Soul here, so we could see both tanks getting even tankier. Um, but at the same time, in terms of the damage department, no more Infernal Drakes coming up. Uh, Barlow, and, Barlow and Zephyroth, they're not going to be super concerned uh, about these Dragons coming up. Um, so we'll see. They're, they are gonna, most likely going to have Cryo in the lane. So we are going to see. It's going to be tough for UTM to pick up these dragons. But if they can get those quick fights um, and be up on numbers when the dragons do come up like they just did. Oh, that's oh, barely going to be bad. If I'm living the flash Q from Zephyrog going to get Batty there. So get him again with the flash Qs. He just yeah. gets him every time. So uh, really well played there by Zephyrog. And again, uh, using that flash Q to its fullest extent. But I just want to talk about the gold for a second here. We had now a K. For Zephyrot over this opposing mid laner who did end up having a lot more kills earlier and again we do see uh, about 600 gold difference there in the top lane between the Orn and the Scion um, no surprise there but other than that like junglers are pretty much even bot lanes pretty much even as well yeah. um, Amumu up about 800 gold somehow on this uh, Braum most likely from those turret plates that he picked up so um, pretty well even across the rest of the board there but, but for right now I think it's pretty even at this 15 minute mark. I think it's really going to be, can they turn this early game uh, into a later game for St. Clair? Oh, looks like E-Hug going to be here for a gank. Q is going to land on this. Oh, never mind. He actually stops it with the W. All going to go down as well. That's going to be both junglers here in the top lane. Fight looks like could go St. Clair's way. Nice stun there. Actually going to catch one. Nice double knock up. That's not going to matter. That's going to be E-Hug. Taking out Proxy, they're going to change into this Grave Sign. Going to land the Q on this Orn. They're going to go for a dive here. Juno going to get shut down as well. Eha going to transform. And that's going to mean he will escape. Ricky as well getting out from under tower. Really, really well executed team fight there in the top lane between those junglers and top laners. And St. Clair coming out on top yet again. Yeah, and that's that's exactly... If we're going to see any kills come out in the top lane, you know, we got to see both junglers there. Uh, because there just isn't, isn't enough damage without them. But yeah, great play. The chain, the chain stun from the Viego stun into the Scion Q 
beautifully executed. They got the graves out of the way very quickly, and Ornn was just stuck there under tower. There's not much you can do at that point. Yeah, that's it feels bad both. when you have that shield bow and you're still dying <laughs> through. That's <laughs> like, I bought this item, so I didn't get bursted down, and I'm still getting bursted down. So uh, definitely it feels bad there for Proxy. But again, you got to give all credit to St. Clair, E-Hug, and Ricky pulling out a perfect chain CC in order to catch him before he could hide underneath that tower. And, I mean, as well as this top lane has been performing for um, UTM, it seems like the Scion is going to, uh, now that he's able to take turret, he's going to be able to start getting it on the map more effectively. And uh, I really thought this would go more towards Juno or Ayuno. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I thought it would go more towards him. He did have the significant killy, but I guess it is just two tanks top, so you can't really two -third turn that in too much. Yeah, it is what it is. And now that the Sunfire... We're seeing Sunfire Cape Dormail on both people. They're basically even on items, basically even on gold. Um, you know, Ricky was keeping the CS lead, even though Ayuno did have the the kill lead. So he did have the gold lead, but uh, up until just now, I mean, Ricky had a, a solid 15-20 CS lead for a while. Um, so I, I think the items weren't as far apart where it was like the Ornn was so much stronger than him that he can just all in him as a tank. Yeah, for sure. So mid lane turret, Guzdek taken. Looks like it might be engaged here in the bot lane, but Zephyrot will dodge out of that Everfrost and nothing will happen there. So mid lane, you can get taken. That's what that bot lane prio ended up helping them out. Uh, engage going to be here on the bot lane. Fresh will get caught out by this uh, Braum ult. Fresh will come back in with the Q, but he is going to get knocked up a second time by this Orn. Bullet time going to come out, but then again, Jelly Knife has the wall and that won't be stopped. Fresh going to get taken down there. That's that's the problem when you run the EMF. Amumu into the Braum is that that shield is going to negate so much damage from that misfortune and uh, Fresh paid the price. Yeah, he just about saved everyone there and but a nice pick on Fresh by UTM. You know, they, they got there. I would have liked to see the Ornalt not have to come out um, because all it really did was force Fresh to use his ult, which looks like it's going to come up a little faster can't tell yeah i think it'll be up about the same time but uh, but i mean in the end it is just a kill secured there's nothing yeah there's no objectives up uh for another you know 10 seconds so by the time both top laners end up back down there it's going to be even they are going to be catching each other out in the jungle though it looks like a nice stun there everfrost will come out from batty yet again but won't catch zephyrot so zephyrot with a lot of harass onto the silas in the bot lane so it is definitely a struggle for him to farm there it is going to be oh looks like ezra might be caught here in the jungle won't use this e just in just a second waiting for it that's going to be the alt coming out no he's actually going to stop that who's going to miss not going to go over the wall so it means ai will live here in the bot lane but it does mean they force him off of the dragon so st Clair will start that one up and looks like there won't be a contest for it by utm yeah, St. Clair's going to get a quick dragon. Alt's going to come out. Not able to steal it. Um, we're just going to see UTM back off here. Both teams kind of disengaging. We're going to see backs coming out. Orn's going to head back up to the top lane. Yeah, and I think not having the Orn ult did kind of stop them from re-engaging in that fight. They maybe would have thought about it if it was available. But Ezreal being caught out in the river there was definitely uh, made it a lot harder for them to try and challenge that one. Once he was chunked down a significant portion, they couldn't really face check into that uh, into the dragon pit. And like I said, Ricky having the prio in the top lane makes it so much harder because he ended up being at that fight sooner and was able to zone them off of checking that dragon and allowed St. Clair to take that one. Yeah, having Ricky just posted up there at UTM's jungle entrance, just with that, with, he's just charging his Q. They're not even close to him, but they have vision there and he knows they have vision. Uh, and when they're just seeing that threat of the the scion knockup they they can't really engage there's nothing they can do there yeah. zephyrot he's gonna chase after no he's not he's moving away yeah we do see the mf actually coming through with kraken instead of the typical lethality bill and i think really that's because you do have the orn at such a tanky state so early in this game you are gonna have to try and push through that you're gonna have the braum picking up his uh, support item here sometime soon so it'll be good to get some kind of shred uh, early on in this game and allow you to be doing a lot of damage to this front line because it is definitely going to be Orn sitting in front of the Silas and the Ezreal as much as possible. Looks like there'll be a little bit of fighting here. All going to go down in the bot lane here. MF is coming to support though, so Batty will be doing a significant portion of damage. That's not going to matter. That's going to be a lot of damage out of that misfortune. Ricky going to finish off the kill on Batty there. A good try on that Silas, but he did realize that the, the dive was coming and uh, couldn't do much about it. Yeah, we're going to see the Rift being dropped bot lane. That's going to take that tower quickly. E-Hug moving in on the Ezreal. Ezreal's going to back away. We're going to see Fresh clearing some more vision in the jungle here. 
Uh, three UTM players towards bot side. They may, they may be looking to fight here some a little bit. We're just going to see the bot lane move back. The Ornn is also coming down in the lane. E-Hug going to hit a quick stun. Going to be stunned himself. Take a lot of damage. Ooh, Fresh being knocked away. Not going to be able to get the R off. Oh, that's going to be Barlow taking out Jelly Knife. That's going to be a double knockup, though. Juno with a beautiful answer into St. Clair's offense. TP going to be channeled as well. That's going to mean Silas joining the fight here, and that's going to be Fresh cleaned up as well as Eha going down. That's going to be a kill over for Zephyrot and Ricky, but it's not going to matter because it's still three for three, and that's going to be Ricky finally being taken down in that bot. It's going to be a three for four for UTM, and what looked promising for St. Clair actually ended up turning out pretty good for UTM. Yeah, that ult from Jelly Knife really shut down Fresh. I mean, he was mid-bandage toss. He got shut down. Uh, Barlow had already used the ult, so their gas was kind of used by the time the rest of the team got there. By the time Ricky got there, he was kind of just stuck with the mess that was left. Yeah, for sure. And I think key there, too, was that Ehug dedicated himself so early to that fight. He ended up stunning up the Braum. Not exactly the target you want to stun up was able to escape and didn't really turn it into anything though. He wasn't able to clean up anything on the backside of that. And you know, when you have an Ornn that is this tanky, it is so hard to actually push yourself into that backline, especially when you have the Braum shield on top of it. You, it's so hard to access that backline and give yourself an availability to actually t take someone out. Cause if you're fresh, you're looking to try and attach yourself to this Ezreal, to this Graves and get yourself into that backline. But realistically right now, it's they're so tanky like they're just so innately tanky that even getting a good curse of the sad bummy doesn't mean that bullet time is going to actually generate any kills uh yeah especially with that ezreal having divine sunder he he's already got the cloth armor we're probably going to see him go frozen heart here um so yeah barlow's alt not necessarily going to one shot with the combo yeah and he does end up picking up his lord donzo so he's going to have a lot of armor pen early here and we get a void staff Coming through as well for Zephyrot. So both of these champions are going to have a lot of penetration. Able to push through that front line decently well. But I'm really looking towards the execution of this one. I think Silas is going to be very important in this next fight. Does not have his, his uh, Ziz, or not Zizirot, um, Zanyas just yet. So going to be key if he can try and survive in this one. Does have six deaths on that mid laner. And I think really a couple of them may not be his fault. It was a lot of time him pushing himself to engage. So that the rest of his team... Could follow up and get a lot of a lot of kills as you see the orn being six one and four um has helped him out a lot but i think right now it's going to be on the silas to try and find some good engages onto this back line try and eliminate this mf of course she can throw out her ultimate yeah we're going to see a little engagement here in the jungle as sec is going to back away uh both teams kind of trying to make their way down towards this dragon sec going to make it there first we're going to see utm pushing into them through this river bush they don't have any vision Zephyrot going to hit a quick Q onto the or Not going to do much. Fresh is just kind of in there. He's going to hit a two-man alt as Barlow oh, unable to what pick a up Q. any kills. Sion going to hit a huge Q. UTM very low here. Zephyrot going to get picked up. I love you going to pick up a triple kill. Luno's in there. He's picking him up. It's just Ricky left. He's going to be chased down. A quick Q out of the bush. He may be able to pick up the bot laner here. He is going to pick up the ADC. <laughs> <laughs> that so feels bad. No pentakill oh, for wow. the Ezreal. Somehow, Ricky able to pick up that kill and get the shutdown. Dragon will end up going over to UTM. But again, it just seems like this combo of MF and Amumu is... You want that dream at Curse of the Sad Mummy on top of the bullet time. But every time they go for it, Fresh just gets denied by this brawl. Yeah, there's just... Yeah, the one piece of the puzzle is just not coming together. And it's not like the bot lane is doing bad by any means. Yeah. Um, although this Ezreal is now definitely very strong. Yeah, um, for sure. But yeah, the Fresh is just, he's really getting shut down. And then we're just seeing a kind of Ricky left there at the end because he simply has the most health and hasn't been taken down by this Graves who's just one-shotting people or this Ezreal who's two-shotting people. Yeah, for sure. It just seems like E-Hug's pick here on this Viego is not being nearly as effective as this Graves. Graves able to add a lot with that smoke screen. Um, and E-Hug just not getting the assassinations he needs to. Actually, the back's going to be stopped there. They're going to catch out Juno in a bad spot here. We'll try anyway, but they are going to get the shot down onto that Orn, and they could look for Baron potentially. e -Hug has other ideas, wants to try and engage, but will end up backing off here. And maybe they'll look towards this Baron. Silas is also in the bot lane. Does have teleport available, so can join this fight but is going to be quite a 
hard one as they do have Orn down. They are going to push down this Baron. Could be dangerous here. Zephyroth going to throw the ult down onto the Graves just for zoning. Sion also going to ult towards mid. Is going to catch this Graves. No, Graves is going to actually watch walk Flash over the away. wall there. Baron is going to be down pretty low. Going for the steal. That's going to be a Brahma, but not going to be for anything. Nice smite there by E-Hug. Oh, they're going to catch him with the E. Ult's going to come right. down as well. Bullet time going to come down as well. That's the kind of a moo moo. That's MF the one you, you see. wanna see. That's gonna be two kills over to St. Clair, and they're gonna push out with this Baron. Yeah, that Baron call was huge. They got the pick, they immediately moved towards the Baron, and when you're UTM there, you have no way to engage. They, they tried to get the quick steal with the Braum alt over the wall, but that's about as much as you can do. They kinda gotta just give up that Baron. Yeah, for sure. A really good answer to that. Good catch there onto Juno. Kind of a, a greedy back in that top lane uh, definitely not something or is it i you know or juno uh it's luno i believe luno it, oh that's an l yeah it is an i but it's supposed to be pronounced luno as, an l, as far okay. as i know um yeah so it was a greedy back by luno there it was actually just slightly in vision for saint Clair to take so unfortunately for him a a grave mistake that ended up being costing them a baron and two lives as well so definitely swung it back in saint Clair's favor they are up about 5k gold now Although we are getting towards the part of the game where gold doesn't mean nearly as much. It is more about uh, execution and how you play out these team fights. Yeah, however, this is the biggest gold lead we've seen in this game. Up until this point, the teams were going back and forth with about 1k leads each. Just back and forth. Every couple of minutes, we'd see one fight send one team a little bit more ahead and one fight send the other team ahead. Um, however, with that Baron, you know, St. Clair is picking up a lot of gold and they're picking up a lot of turrets on this map. Yeah, and I think I do want to point out that going on later in this game does bode well for UTM just because they do have this Ornn. It will be granting items. You already see one on the Graves as well as the Ezreal, so they do have their upgraded items there. Um, and we'll see Silas's and Brahms come in sometime soon, most likely before this next dragon is up in a minute, two minutes. And I think that's going to be the next big team fight. It is only going to be third dragon, so it won't be something too significant. No soul just yet, but. It is going to be the next objective point. And right now, I'm looking for St. Clair. They are running the 4-1 with the sign in the top lane. Um, nothing in the bot lane. Silas will be hanging out there. So they will try and push out here. I'm really looking for a good engage here by Amumu. And if they can get a, a couple kills here, they can end the game. Yeah, if they get a little vision over oh, here. But that is a lot wow. of damage onto the Graves. As E-Hug's going to dive him. The ult is just going to barely miss. Jelly Knife and Proxy really low here. E-Hug going to get dove by that Orn. But How he's he not, not going to die just yet. Oh, wow. Three kills for St. Clair. Two kills so far for UTM in this fight. And we're going to see Ayuno very low here. I love you going to pick up one. Two players left for St. Clair. Just the Ezreal left on oh. UTM. He's going to take down Fresh. It's just the ADCs left. Barlow has this Baron buff. And I love you very low. He's going to be able to get this inhibitor here. Yeah, I love you. Definitely looking pretty good on this Ezreal. He has a lot, a lot. He won that 1v1 against Zephyroth there. Got a beautiful R to take out Fresh. And they do get an inhib for St. Clair, but won't amount to anything else. So really good. That game could have been over right there. If I Love You was able was ended up going down there, it definitely was GG. St. Clair would have taken it, but really good job. Dodged the stun with the E and was able to take out that Syndra. And an R ultimate on the top was able to take out the Amumu as well. And allow them to keep themselves in this game. Because right now, I mean, outside of I Love You, like the Silas is totally struggling in these fights. Graves, you saw almost call one shot, essentially, by that Syndra QE. So I really think it's going to be hard for them to stay alive. Only saved by his shield bow there. But it's going to be really all on to I Love You and seeing if he can perform uh, and end up carrying this game out for UTM. Also, yeah, Ricky, we're going to see here. Ricky is now an item up on the Orn there. Uh, so he's going to be slightly beefier out of the two tanks, as well as his scaling from uh, the health he gets from his passives. Uh, we're going to see the Ezreal ult come in a little early, as SEC is going to pick up the third dragon here for themselves. Yeah, Maybe they might look for a fight here, actually. He's not going to catch anyone, though. Looks like Ehug might want to engage here, but I think they're just going to back off. Objective was taken by St. Clair, and Baron will be up sometime soon. Actually, an engage to come here out of... The Scion will try and look for something, but he's not going to find anyone. He'll just run his face into a wall, do a nice little face plant, and then walk away. So nothing too crazy happening. I'm expecting this next fight at Baron to really be the uh, game changer man I have here. Yeah, and the thing is, look, we're seeing Body Fought now. He's forced to sit in base and defend these super minions. Um, so UTM's going to have a harder time picking up vision on the rest of the map because they just have one less player for security. Yeah, I really think the Silas is going to have to try and come into his own. It does have uh, two and a half items here. 
And there's three, almost four items on the Syndra. So definitely Zephyrot gapping himself way ahead of the Batty Fat right now. Um, but yeah, Batty Fat's going to pick up another Nusilar draw, but not completed that Rabadon's just yet. So definitely an advantage here for the mid lane for St. Clair. They will push bot here. And they will pick up tier 2 turret uncontested. And they'll try and look to push in maybe on the inhibitor here. But they do have 4 up. So I think right now if you're St. Clair, you back up. You say, okay, we have, we're going to get our 4th item. And then we're going to look towards this Baron in 45 seconds. Try and get some vision on. So yeah, you see the backs coming out now. Um, it is going to be dangerous though. Because you can see neither team has any vision on Baron right now. There's a scuttle taken for St. Clair. But other than that, like there's a couple pink wards in UTM's bushes. But there's no vision anywhere. So... I think it's really, really important here for St. Clair to push out. Fresh going to get some wards down, and, and it's going to be up to UTM to try and uh, contest that vision because if they can't get anything on this Baron, I, I think it's going to be really tough for them to actually contest it. Yeah, we're already seeing both Barons, or both teams move top towards this Baron. They both know it's the big objective, and honestly, this is going to make or break the game. If St. Clair gets this Baron, I, I don't see how they don't win this next fight, uh, especially with the gold lead and item lead they have right now. Um, unless UTM is able to have some perfect plays, perfectly shut down that Amumu, perfectly shut down that MF. Oh, and the that's Grom huge! Going to be picked off early in this fight, and that might just be the Baron for them. That might be the whole fight, the whole game, who knows. We're going to see E-Hug getting very aggressive, moving all the way to the base. Luno going to get away, though. He's just too tanky. Yeah, they might look to actually go back for this Baron. They don't have a wave to push in mid yet, so they are going to look towards this Baron, but... Caught in the same spot because you saw Juno or Luno did the same thing earlier in the game, yeah. and the exact same thing happened. A stun came over the wall from this uh, from this uh, Syndra, and then he ended up getting caught out. Objective was taken afterwards, and, and it just seems like it's it's a, re a repetition here. But they are going to want to fight this. There are four in the jungle. They're going to try and collapse onto this. The river alt is going to come down here. It's going to be a big Q. That's going to land on two. That's going to be bullet time coming out. Just barely surviving. Ea going to take a batty fat in the end. They're going to change it into Silas. We'll catch another one. That's going to be Luno here going down to another one. That's going to be E-Hug picking up the Orn and saying, thank you very much. We will try and take this game. A beautiful E-Cleanse going to come out of this. Ezra, though, will survive here for the moment. I love you trying to do everything he can to keep his team in this game, but it's looking like not. Yeah, a little bit of damage. I love you was able to get a little bit of damage onto Zephyrot there. It is going to slow down their push. However, the rest of UTM is just stuck Ooh, e defending is these hunting. minions. He's lane. hunting. Oh, he is hunting down here. He oh. is able to hit the stun. He's most likely going to get him here. Yeah, that Viego damage, very strong, you know. That's what it's like to be an ADC. Yeah, for sure. And it's so tough when you're at that stage because Viego has so much innate healing. And he is at four items, has that mo or has the uh, three items, sorry, he has Sterics. So he's able to stay alive a lot longer. And uh, I really think that I love you did a lot of work in this game. But St. Clair just playing those team fights so much better. That's going to be Jelly Knight being taken down here in just a second. Top laner going down as well. It's going to be a Mumu alt coming out of the Silas, but it's going to be all for nothing. Bad Egan and Zanyas aren't going to come out as well. That's going to mean that it will be traded one for one, but a nice Zanyas there. Knock up will come down. Zephyrot could go down here. Actually going to get a second kill, but it's not going to matter. They're all dead, and that's going to be St. Clair cleaning up this game. A hard-fought one, but in the end, St. Clair comes out on top. That is going to be 1-0 for St. Clair, and I don't know if you saw there. But Ricky was tanking that turret for yeah. like at least like <laughs> that's the power six of the scion. Hits. Power at of the scion. Uh, and they just could not take him down until both turrets were already gone. That's gonna be game one for Saint Clair. Yeah, and I, I was a hard fought game. Definitely swung both ways. I think there was uh, early advantage, definitely going the way of UTM. But yeah. Saint Clair weathered the storm. Uh, Ricky ended up still somehow getting that turret first, despite the Orn being four hundred one, which. It's just Ricky things. It was incredible. Uh, I think the bot lane Barlow looked really good. I think Fresh definitely got cut out a few times uh, in those engages. He shouldn't have, uh, you know, the, the problem was the Braum. It's just yeah. so hard when you're engaging in that Braum. But all credit to I Love You, too. I Love You was dancing around those fights. No one could get on top of him. And, and twice in that game, he ended up saving them. But it just really yeah. wasn't enough. I think definitely Zephyrot winning that mid lane out. Uh, Batty struggling in a lot of parts of that game. Just kind of on cleanup duty. And when you're a Silas, you feel bad. Because it's like, you want to be able to be in those fights to be that engaged tool. But he's stuck on the side lanes cleaning up minions. And it just meant that a lot of those fights going St. Clair's way. Just because they had the numbers advantage. Yeah, I think that really came down to where the gold was spread out for UTM. Yeah. I mean, the, four kills on the Orn, it's great. You're going to have a very tanky front line. 
but that's only going to carry you so far. Yeah. If your damage is lacking, like we saw, the Ezreal damage was lacking until he gets those two items, and that's just how Ezreal is. That's the nature of the champion. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, we saw I Love You. He was putting in a lot of work. His skill shots were on point. We were seeing those he hit that R onto Fresh, which just barely saved the game at the yeah. end there uh, and let them last a little longer. Uh, but, yeah, it was just kind of just unfortunate that the Orn ended up picking up those four kills at the starting when you had the Graves yeah. and the Silas there. Um, but it happens. Yeah, I really think, you know, it did feel like a lot of it was just this Zephyrot landing, these incredible ease uh, twice on these Barons where it was first time it was Luno, second time it was uh, the bot jelly laner. Jelly Knife. Yeah, Jelly Knife. Was. Where they got caught out by that dragon on the other side, or by the Baron on the other side of that wall, meant to pick, meant Baron went St. Clair's way, and then after that, they, they tried to contest it, and it just all kind of fell apart. So I think that's very important to remember is those greedy positions that you're taking, you need to have vision, um, and you need to be able to have pressure on the river so that you can't, you aren't forcing yourself to try and fight for vision instead of just having it preemptively when that objective is going to come up. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like those, are those, uh, those picks that uh, St. Clair was able to get onto UTM, I, I feel like they were just UTM just backing a little greedily. Like, they really didn't need to be there. He yeah. could have just stepped back a little bit, stepped back into that bush near the Raptors, stepped back to the red buff. Just He, he was so close to that mid lane and that river when they know that Baron is up and they yeah. know that St. Clair is around that side of the map. Uh, it just felt a little greedy to me. Yeah, for sure. And I think really the difference maker in this game was the priority that they had with this Syndra, I think the Silas was just stuck in the side lane for too long, and I felt like Batty didn't really get to be part of the game, and then eventually they just kind of were like, okay, the Silas has been bot lane for, for so long, he has no one by him, and they dove him a couple times too. So I think maybe you go into maybe a control mage sort of mid laner, so you can play less aggressively in the early game, get yourself an advantage, because they definitely had uh, a lot of good stuff happen in that early game and then the mid game fights, but it just felt like when you got later on in the game, a couple of uh, communication errors, a couple of picks, it meant that St. Clair ended up taking the victory. Yeah, and we are going to be moving into a five-minute break here before our next game. Uh, quick thanks to our sponsors before we go into our break. We got Crunchyroll, Tim Horton, Subway. Uh, Crunchyroll, you can get your 14-day premium free trial at crunchyroll.com slash saints. Uh, and then, of course, we got the St. Clair SRC, the St. Clair Alumni Association, and St. Clair College. So, yeah, we'll be back in five. We'll take a quick break, and, yeah, see you soon. 